Well, hello there. Let's take a look at some of the new fun stuff in Wraithbinder. This week, I've been working on a couple new things, a couple new creations added to the game. One of them is telekinesis. The telekinesis ability. This is, um, really excited about this one. Check this out. This that L button. There we go. So you, uh, you can press a button to use your telekinesis and you can shoot it out at any, like, 360 degree rotation. And it will attract enemies near to you. So you can, like, if an enemy's trying to run away, you can, like, keep them with you. Or you can actually, um, you can actually attack or and move these turrets as well. So this turret is not on my team right now. This whole base right here is not my base yet. Um, and there's already a strategy where you can, um, if you can hold down this button right here long enough, you can steal the base. But with the turret in the way, the turret usually knocks you out of the way. So one new strategy to stealing a base is now to use your telekinesis to move that, um, that enemy turret out of the way and then go in steal the base and boom you've got a new base where you can heal and that turrets now yours and all that so that's a way of stealing a base without having to destroy the turret um, and without having to use a teammate for any help so you know with a teammates help you could have one person out here dodging these or attracting the attention of the turret and the other person going and stealing the base. Let's see if I can steal. So, you see how much you get knocked back sometimes by these ghost swords? It's kind of hard to steal a base when you're alone. So, this really need to have this telekinesis. Let's go actually use it on an enemy, though. So, you can see what's up with that. Oh, there's like a somebody's skybot. You can use it. Oh, there's some something. Check it out. They're trying to get away, and nope. It's also kind of cool, you can like float up in the air with levitate, and then you can do this. Just like... 360 degree telekinesis for a second. I should mention that the telekinesis is, is, uh, is a cone shape, so... Um, it projects out, the telekinesis effect projects outwards in a cone shape from your character. So it, it reaches about as far as those, um, those circular particles are. Um, going um, and it spreads out in a cone um, a little bit wider than those um, that I, I don't know the width of a player something like that it's like the width of three or four players so wider than <coughs> yeah <clears throat> three or four players ish something like that uh, the other new thing with uh, with Wraith Binder this is pretty fun is the grass so you can actually hide in grass now. When you when you step inside grass, your character will become semi-transparent. I'm actually already semi-transparent because I'm a wraith. Um, but um, if I were if I were um, not a wraith, I would be see. Oh, actually, it is more transparent than it was. So okay, here I am. I'm just a wraith. I'm semi, sort of transparent, barely. But when I step in here in in the grass, I'm more transparent than that. Um, however, to to anyone that's my foe, that's not on my team, I am completely invisible at this point. So I can sit here, hide in this grass. No one knows I'm here. The AI cannot target me either. So the AI pre like basically pretend that they don't know where you are. Um, but that yeah, they they technically do not actually know where you are at all. So if you're standing in grass. This is super cool for sneaking up and killing people. Um, so my next goal is to add lots of different places in the map where um, the grass becomes really effective at allowing players to sneak up on each other. <laughs> I think that's just fun as heck, right? Where you where you can go, oh, I'm going to go sit here and wait inside these this grass for somebody to come by. Um, for example, there's one little part up here um, where you've got grass next to these teleporters. And I can see someone sitting here hiding right next to the teleporter someone pops out of the teleporter and boom you can gank them or um or maybe someone walks up the stairs to this teleporter and you can gank them something like that uh so as far as technical things that have gone on this week um i've noticed that my performance has 
um, has decreased quite a bit. Uh, we're now running at 30, you know, 35 frames a second, something like that, while streaming. Uh, while I'm normally just, my computer's in, in, in a normal state, I'm really only at 45 or 50 frames per second. I think it might be because of this, these new player um, HUD items up in the top left there. I think they might be using an extremely amount, extreme amount of CPU or GPU or something. I haven't really checked it though. Uh, but that should be sp relatively simple to fix because it's something that's been introduced recently. So I know it's something I did uh, in the last few weeks. So that'll need to get handled. However, I also started some other stuff uh, this week that um, I basically made it so like all of the models in the game, they, they have to get shaded and rotated and occluded and all this stuff when they get when they get loaded, but then also there's another thing where um, entities get colored according to your team color. So for example, these these uh, gates right here, and even this switch right here, and even the grass, they're all yellow colored. And that's because this section of the, the map is the yellow players, or the yellow base, let's just call it the yellow base. Um, so that, that color shifting has is basically just a palette swapping, right? You're going into the palette of the voxels and switching out whatever color the team color is for uh, for yellow in this case, or purple, or green in my case, whatever. Um, so that palette swapping used to happen at runtime, and now it happens at load time. And you can see that render, t render tick, um, that's that's uh, on the right side of the screen, you see ren.t. It's, a, it's running at 150 milliseconds-ish right now, and render.a is about 50 milliseconds. That used to take a lot more. That was more like 250 milliseconds on average for the tick. And that's because it had to go, and every time it refreshed a model, which has to happen, like for example, whenever you, whenever an, uh, an animation changes frame, like all these grass entities right here, when they go from one frame to another, which is barely a change, right? It has to go and refresh its model. So it goes to the model cache, loads in that model, then applied the color shift. Now it's a lot better. It all happens when it loads. So when it, um, right when it loads, it, ca it caches the fact that it's got a yellow, it, it applies those color shifts right when you're, when you're loading rather than at runtime while you're playing the game. So that, um, that should, I haven't gone, I haven't had enough time to go and um, actually uh, do any profiling to see how much improvements have been made in that case, in, in regards to that. Um, however, I think it's a huge improvement as far as the runtime. However, it, it has slowed down the load, so I've got to go fix that a little bit because it's getting to the point where it's taking me too long to load while I'm making this game. Um, I go here and I run the game. Every, you know, like every five minutes I make a little tiny change, I go, I do a little bit of coding, and then run the game again. And so when, if, a, if a load time gets up to like 20 or 30 seconds, that's really long and gets really uh, cumbersome to me as a developer um, trying to trying to, to do that every single time. So I've got to figure out a way to like fix that. And also it would be better for players, of course, if you have these really fast load times. And I know I can do it. So I've got an idea of basically just doing some background loading. So when you first load, um, you don't need to do all of the characters. Um, you don't need to load all the players. The players are the things that call, that um, that take the most load time because they have tons of animations and they're all custom. Every single player is completely different. Like my, I have a cloak. Um, I have long hair and blah blah blah. All these different model configurations apply. Uh, to to my character only, and not a, and not anyone else. So another player uh, has a completely different configuration. They have to load tons of animations as well. So the point is, why not do that in the background? So you've got you've got a certain number of players which you can which load at the very beginning um, because they're on screen and entities as well. There's tons of entities all around the map that uh, that don't need to load right away. They can be loaded later. So why not dedicate a tiny bit of your tick each each time you run the, your game's loop, the tick. Um, you go and spend, say, 10 milliseconds loading stuff in the background. So you've got, basically the, the concept is you got a list of all the, um, all the models that you definitely have to load and all those get loaded before you ever show the screen. Um, and then you can lazy load all the rest in the background. So. I'm pretty sure that idea will, will work and it'll be nice. Um, 
but that will take some that'll take some work. So check it out. I'm the last player left alive. Nobody can find me. What's up? Oh no, wait, no, there's somebody else on the other team. That's it. This guy. Little does he know. Oh. Little does he know I have telekinesis. Yeah, this performance is really starting to get to get to me. This is I can definitely see that this is not the highest performance anymore. Uh, but anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll come back with another update making Wraithbinder later on. See ya.